Meow. Meow. What we have here is a cat. <laughs> That was a dumb joke, but anyway, it's a catalytic converter. A catalyst is something that starts a reaction or starts things moving. Like in our bodies, we have enzymes that are catalysts for our digestive system. In cars, um, the leftover emissions from the car, uh, the harmful ones, there's three of them. There's hydrocarbons, there's oxides of nitrogen, and carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is poisonous because it bonds to the things in your lungs better than O2, the oxygen that we breathe. So anyway, catalytic converters help to break that up. And there's two parts to a catalytic converter. Um, well, there's several parts to them. You know, you've got your just your regular tailpipe or exhaust pipe. You've got the shield to keep your catalytic converter from burning things, you know, like the grass and whatnot under your car. Um, and then you've got the cavity, and then you've got two different catalysts in it. This one's out of a Honda Odyssey. <laughs> Look at all that platinum falling out everywhere. This one. What happens is, um, you, this is like a honeycomb style. You can either have ceramic beads or a ceramic honeycomb. And then the honeycomb has the platinum, palladium, and rhodium in it. And uh, basically, this one's just come undone. You know, it's just not sticking to it anymore. And when the platinum, palladium, rhodium, whatever, uh, when it's stuck to it, it only works when it's heated up. And you go through all these different temperature cycles. You know, basically, that just means that you're cold, you warm up, you're hot, you cool down. So you have a temperature cycle. With those uh, temperature cycles, basically, they just wear out and they don't stick anymore. So no amount of washing. You know, sometimes you can wash it if you've had a bad misfire, bad ignition coil, old spark plugs, and it gets coated with black stuff like this one is. You can see where my plasma cutter actually burned into the honeycomb but it also cleaned it. You know, this one was a little bit dirty, but uh, more than anything, the stuff just came undone on it. So, you can see the glitter everywhere. So, uh, this is the flow for this one. It goes through this way. So, this is the primary catalyst. It's called the reduction catalyst. And what it does is it rips oxides of nitrogen. You have um, NO and NO2 and basically it rips the nitrogen off because this is uh, coated with platinum and rhodium and the nitrogen sticks to it as it's going through only when it's hot got to get it warmed up that's why some of the manufacturers like honda they'll have a catalytic converter that's like part of the exhaust manifold because it makes it heat up faster but those high temperatures from the you know the being so close to the engine causes them to wear out fast. So that's why a lot of other car manufacturers, you know, in starting in the 70s, that's all they did is they put it way far back because they're expensive with all these expensive metals in them. So they wanted them to be far from the engine so it didn't overheat and burn them out fast. So anyways, this one rips the nitrogen off and then, you know, what passes through, you know, eventually, you know, it creates N2 and whatever and eventually that goes through too and just plain nitrogen, just N. Um, and then you've got HCs or hydrocarbons and uh, the hydrocarbons are burned up and also the carbon monoxide uh, is burned up. This is the one that gets hot, the second one in the system. And so it just gets up to high temperatures, you know, like five, six hundred degrees Fahrenheit, you know. And uh, basically, so you rip the nitrogen off on this one, it takes care of the NOx and then the second one takes care of your HCs and your COs. Like I say, carbon monoxide is poisonous. Oxides of nitrogen, uh, they're irritants to your, uh, basically they give you a runny nose. Your mucous membranes and stuff, it just makes them go nuts. It also creates acid rain. Um, the hydrocarbons and the carbon monoxide, those are uh, contributors to smog. So anyway, in the second one, the contents of this, again, we have platinum in both of them. But instead of rhodium and platinum, we have platinum and palladium and uh, basically it just gets hot but you have to have the hot exhaust fumes kind of get it ramped up it's kind of you ever watch nascar and <laughs> some guy's just freaking out like nascar what and he's got like all of these like number plates and a hood on his wall and like all the toys and everything and he's got the shirt and the hat and he's like yeah i watch nascar <laughs> you know it's finally paying off you watch them push the cars out, you know, from the racetrack side, and uh, you know they push them by hand, and then they kick in and go. 
you know, like basically the temperature of your exhaust is what gets these going. You know, they're like a race car. <laughs> they require a little push in temperature, but once they get going, boy, do they go. Especially once this one starts burning and it warms the other one up. Now this one, as you can see, it has a bong on the middle of it so that you can uh, basically get your reading for your oxygen sensor. And usually they'll have a catalytic converter, a post-cat oxygen sensor, and a pre-cat oxygen sensor. And the pre-cat oxygen sensor is also called an air fuel meter or uh, there's some other thing, names for it. But basically what it does is it measures to see if you have a good uh, balance, a stoichiometric balance. What you want is you want 14.7 pounds or kilograms or tons or whatever of air. You want that much air in ratio to one pound kilogram or ton of fuel or hydrocarbons and what's kind of fun is that your car doesn't run on liquid gasoline it runs on the hydrocarbons the hydrocarbons in a gaseous form uh, when those go into your intake or whatever that heat evaporates the gas and when you mist it or you jet it you know you try to break it up as much as you can give it that little NASCAR shove and then uh, the heat of the intake manifold and the cylinder and all of the you know, the heat that's there helps to evaporate it the rest of the way. If you look up Tom Ogle, he came up with a super carburetor and uh, contributed to his demise. <laughs> but basically what he used is he used is a, a series of you know, like charcoal canisters. Like you have a charcoal canister on your gas tank and any hydrocarbons that are going to evaporate and get into the environment and create smog and all this pollution and stuff. Basically what that does is it soaks them up in this charcoal canister and then you have a purge, uh, evap purge solenoid that opens the little hose that goes from your charcoal canister, sucks it up just like a slurpee straw into your intake manifold and it draws all those hydrocarbons off so that your engine can burn them with your combustion process. Um, but long story short, he used a whole bunch of those. You have a little gasoline in the bottom of the tank and then all these charcoal canisters those stupid chickens. Keep watching the chickens because they keep trying to run away. You see that one? That one's name is Clucky. Clucky's retarded and doesn't stay with the group. <laughs> it just wanders off. You know, like I go let the chickens out and instead of running out along the ground out the gate, Clucky runs up into the top of the coop <laughs> and then runs down and then runs out. She just retarded. Like I say with Tom Ogle and his designs is that he used extreme magnify and amplify the engine vacuum vacuum causes things to evaporate really quickly too if you have a syringe and you pull it up you know have a little water in the bottom of your syringe plug it with your finger draw it up you know the plunger it'll create a bunch of uh, fog in there because it'll vaporize the water but if you can do that and more efficiently vaporize the gas before you burn it you wouldn't even need a catalytic converter it burns so clean you wouldn't need to change your oil as often either because you wouldn't have as much ash that's getting in your engine you know it just seriously your <laughs> everything in your whole car would be better you know better mileage cleaner that's serious that's that's your meal ticket right there but anyway he wound up getting found dead in his car in the desert so if you're gonna do it maybe it's best to not tell anybody <laughs> and the reason why is it violates the whole economy that's run on you know oil and gas sales and all that kind of thing because you know if everybody's buying less gasoline and doing less oil changes it really slows business down for the people who are selling those products so they don't appreciate that um I think I've told you about everything I want to tell you. Um, like I say, you got an air fuel meter sensor. Well, it just senses oxygen is all it senses. And if you have oxygen and a lot of it up here, that means it's not being burned in the combustion cycle because you're only supposed to have H2O, you know, water is a byproduct. You're supposed to have CO, carbon, or CO2, which is carbon dioxide. And uh, <laughs> I'm drawing blanks. Uh, hydrogen and uh, just nitrogen that just passes through. You got a bunch of nitrogen and argon and everything in the air that you breathe anyway. So, but if you have a lot of oxygen, that means that it's not being burned properly. And so, your sensor will pick that up and it'll say, "Hey, we're either too rich or too lean," and you know, make adjustments. And then you got another one. It's either in the catalytic converter or after the catalytic converter, and that one just basically you know says how well it's done after you know it's babysits to see if you've burned off everything or if you're polluting so
Anyway, this video is going on 10 minutes, and we've included chickens and Tom Ogle and all this other kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to call it good. This is way longer than what I wanted to do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you like it, you can click subscribe. Um, and uh, if you want to see more videos like this, you click subscribe, add to down arrow favorites. I'm so incredibly tired. What do you do with your kids if your kids are having nightmares and waking up in the morning? Like seriously, if I can sleep from midnight to 5, I'm awesome. But if I get woke up every single morning because of just random nightmares, stuffy noses, you know, etc., what do you do? <laughs> Sleeping in the camper tonight. Anyway, thanks for watching my video. Cheers.